Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products and Focus. And it looks to be that global equity markets are still managing to, uh, to push on higher as oil prices jumped almost 5% yesterday as Russia and Saudi Arabia uh, are deciding to meet to discuss the current oil glut. The opposing views on the Syrian war, you've got Saudi Arabia on one side and Russia on the other, might put an end to those proper discussions being that constructive, but um, the markets are taking that as a, as a, as a possible uh, potential outcome that they might meet and arrange to uh, cut oil production, which would cause oil prices to increase in value. And as I said, we almost had a 5% increase yesterday, and um, we're continuing to see a lot of uh, potential momentum uh, gather there in a lot of equity markets apart from Japan 225, which we'll come back to in a second. But we do seem to be hitting that 55 period SMA on the US 30 with a longer term potential resistance at 17,034. So jumping then on to the UK 100, um, still keeping its head above 62, well, let's just say 6,300, uh, again hit by that 55 period SMA. Next potential resistance, 6,415. Uh, and if we do get a retracement, we might now expect that broken resistance at 6,300 to act as a potential support. Other technicals still relatively neutral. With the MACD just about across the zero line, we could get further potential momentum. And you bear in mind that the UK 100 has a fair amount of oil companies on that index. Um, should oil prices continue to push on higher, uh, it could be well supported. So looking at the Japan 25, so it came off yesterday, bounced up again a little bit higher. There was no stimulus measures by the Bank of Japan yesterday, uh, though it might be expected to come slightly later, um, with uh, 18,300 and change being the potential uh, resistance. We've not managed to smash through there with much uh, conviction, but if we do, 18,648 is the next potential resistance, with the other technicals very neutral, uh, which means there could be further momentum. And on Japan 225, to start the session, we actually started a lot lower. So the fact that it's, um, it's spiked higher uh, is, a, is an interesting movement there on Japan 225. So then moving on to uh, dollar yen. Uh, as ever, I'm not really that excited by dollar yen unless you go into a much shorter time frame for it's trading in quite a tight range. Um, in fact, let's just go, let's have a look at a 30 minute interval so we can see how that market is trading relative to the support and resistance levels that we have drawn on there. Uh, so while we're quite a good bit away, it just seems to oscillate quite a lot uh, around these moving averages. Uh, and it's, it's, you could probably redraw some of these trend lines, but it's just not really doing a huge amount. If you're a range bound trader, then this actually could be kind of interesting. Um, but if you like to look at things at slightly longer term, like a cer cer certainly over a few days, um, dollar yen isn't really doing a huge amount. So moving quickly, that's actually quite a disappointing figure for uh, industrial output for uh, Germany that came up on my market calendar. Uh, so the forecast was 0.2 and the actual came in at minus 1.2 with a revision for the previous figure. So that's not so good. And the revision there, uh, they revised that one up, but then this figure's come out quite badly. So uh, some disappointing data just coming out of Germany as we are recording this video. So then moving on to crude oil West Texas, you can just see this absolutely smashing high candle, uh, fully uh, bullish engulfing pattern. Um, we have moved slightly higher this morning, finished the top end of this range. 49.40 is a potential resistance, and that was the trend line level right here. Um, and uh, the market is stopping dead on that level right now. Now, if you break above that with any momentum, you are looking closer to 54.85 as the next potential uh, resistance. So um, there could be some interesting movements. If we fail to break through 49.40 and it ends up that the Saudis and the Russians aren't going to be friendly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case when you consider they've got very opposing views politically on what's happening in the Middle East. Uh, we could see a reversal back down to 45.85, but the market's taking it as a fact that they're willing to meet to discuss production as a possibility. So then looking at gold, gold now again is spiking up higher uh, as interest rates fade into the darkness. Uh, really strong movement we had there in gold yesterday, a decent move today. You are arguably going to get a short term potential um, so kind of resistance level around, around about the tip of this candle. In fact, let's just go ahead and draw that in. <clears throat> we just say that's going to be a short term level. In fact, I've got to get rid of some of these upper levels because I've got so many uh, support and resistance levels here on gold. Uh, we're not actually anywhere near some of these levels for some time, so I really should do some good housekeeping and tidy things up ever so slightly. Uh, and I think this one's quite old as well, so we'll just get rid of that for now. Uh, and we'll redraw this potential tip right here. 
just so we can look at things at a slightly uh, shorter time frame. So these are maybe the core levels to be aware of in the very, very short term. And we can probably get rid of that too because this is slightly old and that's currently where we are. Okay, so 11.57 is the tip of this candle followed by 11.68 and I've taken the resistance levels being a previous candle because even though we ticked higher on the second candle, you always take the one just rightly behind it. Okay, so that's where we are with gold and we finish up with Euro dollar and GBP USD. So Euro dollar, I think we are in a symmetrical triangle formation. Couldn't really get a breakout one direction or the other with one spot 14.75 being one potential target and one spot 11 being the other potential target. Uh, decent move higher for uh, the Euro at the expense of the US dollar yesterday as uh, those interest rate hopes really uh, are completely dashed for anybody who's hoping for higher rates in the US. Um, and then if we finish off with GBP and USD, uh, we're just above one spot at 51.85. Uh, it's been hard to really get some momentum on, on GBP. Uh, it's not been doing so great recently, but one spot, 54.24 is the next potential resistance. Bullish cross on the MACD and a bullish cross over there on the slow stochastic. So from a technical perspective, things could be hotting up a little bit there for GBP USD. Again, I've got loads of support and resistance levels on here, uh, arguably way too many. Uh, so let me just go back there and clean some of this up. Uh, it's also a good technical analysis trick to draw as many lines on a chart as you can, uh, because then some of them are actually gonna go and match up to potential support and resistance levels. Uh, but that's currently where we are. Uh, I think we can get rid of some of these as well, uh, just to make it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. And arguably, you could take some other levels quite close to here. Well, I'm gonna take this tip here anyway. That's gonna be a level for us to watch out for in the future. And I can maybe just redraw things ever so slightly like so. Okay, so these are probably the uh, some of the core levels for us to be aware of on uh, GBP USD with one spot 51.78 now being a potential level to be aware of. So that gives you a bit of an idea. What about the economic data? So today uh, we've already had some, some data come out of Japan. Nothing really that exciting. Obviously disappointing data from Germany. Uh, and then we have the petroleum report on uh, later on today at 3.30 UK time. Go forward on Thursday, you've got the Bank of England MPC minutes, the unemployment claims. And although we don't have it on our calendar, don't forget that on Thursday, around about 7 p.m. UK time, we have the FOMC minutes. And uh, one of the reasons it's not on the calendar is the, the calendar is from Reuters and they have, it's all um, kind of data numbers specific. And obviously the FOMC minutes is a statement rather than a data release. So that's why it's not on the economic calendar, but it is happening. Uh, 7 p.m. UK time, it's an important bit of data. Make sure you don't forget about that. So guys, keep your eye on the chart form as ever. Lots of cool analysis from our global analyst team. Insights gives you the insight, obviously, from our global team. Uh, make sure you don't miss that. Lots of cool, interesting information on there. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.